it broke me. I cried. And I remember after we left, I'm trying not to cry right now because that ending is so fucking powerful, but. Welcome back, everybody, to episode 13 of Into the Geekverse. My name is Zach. And my name is Phil. And we are two of your hosts. One of our hosts is out because we're doing a double header of recording two episodes because the following week we're going to be a little busy. But, um,. Today's episode isn't about any news topics. It's not about anything deep. It's more, well, I guess this could be considered deep, right? Yeah. But we're going off topic. We're not doing our normal template. We're just going to talk about our top 10 favorite movies and video games of all time. We aren't doing shows because I think shows is such a wide variety. But I think movies and games are two specific niches in geek verse that make us a little bit more get to know us in a mm. way. So this will be a fun thing. And a lot of this comes from because when we had our uh, guest, George, on that you weren't on for, you know, we talked about his favorite movies and stuff like that. And I felt like it was cool to get to know him a little bit more Mm -hmm. from that personal side. And I think movies and games kind of showcase your personality in a way that is indescribable. You know, when you hear what someone's favorite movie is, you're like, that explains a lot about them. (laughs) Like when he told me his favorite three movies were Shrek the love guru and Borat. Yeah. Yeah. It, it hit right off the bat, yeah, that's, you know, that's George. So, but, and same thing with video games, you know, it's two different types of mediums of what you're learning from that person. So I think this will be fun. So guys, the way that we're going to do this is basically, we're going to give you our top 10, our number 10 game, and then we'll go back and forth. He's going to give, Phil's going to give us his, I'm going to give mine. Then we're going to give our number 10 movie. Then we're going to talk about that. So we're going to go back and forth. It's kind of like a geek thing. And mm-hmm. hopefully you get to learn something a little bit more about us today and all that stuff. So, uh, Phil, kick it off. What is your number 10 favorite video game of all time? Halo 3. Halo 3. Was it hard to pick Halo 3 out of all the Halos? Uh, no, not really, because I realized I'm like, the games are all amazing, right? The, the first three in the trilogy. But I think when the 360 came out and Halo 3 just first kind of dropped it hit that like note of like this is this is what peak gaming is almost in a way with like forge mode theater mode and all the things like i remember just not even playing peak bungee yeah like not even playing pvp just going into a private match and doing cops and robbers or so the platforming or the duck hunt mode the duck hunt mode zombies like that was all just silly and fun things creativity yeah at its finest um yeah halo you know it's wild halo is not even in mine in my top 10 at all oh wow um which is insane to say and i think it would be like my number 11 my number 12 maybe mm-hmm. um and maybe i could have i almost put it at my number 10 um i just didn't know which one to pick actually you know what i take that back i'm gonna move my i'm gonna change my number 10 oh, really? i'm gonna change my number 10 but not to halo 3 um uh, my number 10 is halo 2 halo 2 was like the first first person shooter i ever played it was the first halo game and it blew my fucking mind on just so many different things on the level of epicness and Mm. um i just like i was so taken back by it the the energy swords all this stuff like my my cousins had this game and i would come over and play split screen with them like what is this it's it's so interesting to me can't forget uh breaking benjamin in there too huh he was when he was one of the song soundtracks. Oh in the, yeah, yeah. In Halo Two. Yeah, but like, and for me, I think Halo Two and Halo Three. Like a lot of people go back and forth um, on that. I know most people Halo Three is their favorite. I didn't play a lot of Halo Three though, and I just mm-hmm. don't have that nostalgia for it. I have Halo Reach and Halo Two nostalgia. Mm-hmm. Um, I loved Three. I thought it was great, but Two, yeah, that's my number ten. For people who wanted to know though, my number ten I originally had is Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. Oh, which is my favorite Mario game of all time. I took it off though, because like in terms of nostalgia, I've played Halo 2 the most and Mm. I probably should have put that in there. I don't even know why I did not have that in there to be honest with you. But uh, Paper Mario would be like my number 11. I love Mm. that fucking game. It's the best GameCube game, best Mario game ever made. Um, What's your number 10 for movies? I got right now, actually out of the list that I have, I think I would have to go with Quiet Place. The first okay. one. That's a great pick. Why Why is that? Is there just something? I think it was just like, um, I kind of like base my movies just like off of like my theater interaction with them. Mm-hmm. And when that I was went to go theater. see, 
see it, it was like so crazy to be in a movie theater just packed to the brim with people and no one wanted to like even take a drink of water or whatever because you could just hear it. And it had this like really big suspense feeling that I haven't felt in a theater before, which was really cool. Yeah, I love that. And then plus it's emotional. Mm -hmm. Like even their kid that dies, like right at the start, you're like, holy shit. Yeah, you're like, wow, they just killed a kid. (laughs) Yeah, and you don't see a lot of kids die and stuff. Yeah, Like it's, it's very rare. Um. Yeah, I like that. That's a good pick, man. Mm-hmm. A Quiet Place is amazing. We got to see A Quiet Place Day 1 earlier this year, and that was that was a good movie, too. Um, I'm excited to see the third part whenever eventually they do it, because yeah. i got to see how that family story overall ends. Uh, yeah. I know they're making a third part, and they're even doing a game, which is pretty crazy, too. Yeah, the game, I hope it's good. I think it could be like Alien Isolation, in a way, and if they pull that off, sweet. That'd be cool. If not, then... Eh, whatever. They tried, yeah. right? So how long do you think he could survive in the quiet place world? Uh, maybe days. Days? Yeah, like days. You don't think he'd be quiet? No. What do you think would get you killed? Uh, me stumbling and making noise on something. Either that or me sneezing. <laughs> I always thought about that. Like, do they like cuff their sneezes and stuff in that yeah. world? Can you imagine and, like, like, like risk having a brain aneurysm? <laughs> Can you imagine having like uh like um uh what's it called uh allergies? Oh my god. Do you think that's actually like the actual villain of the quiet place world is allergies? Maybe. Do you think they stock up on Claritin? Can you imagine if like you just drank some water and you just went down the wrong hole, you know? He started and coughing. Just like <laughs> Yeah. Can you imagine if you had an uh, like diarrhea? <laughs> Can you imagine dying from a fart? Oh my goodness! Yeah, it's like I said. I I, I want I want the. Do you remember back in the day when they did like Scary Movie Five and Scary Movie Six and shit like that? Oh, scary, yeah. Well, they never did six. I think they went up to five, maybe four. If they do another one, they have to have a reference to a quiet place. Yeah, there's just no way. Like of them, like either farting, coughing, like something stupid that gets yeah. them killed. Because like reality is like sometimes I'm watching them like there's no way I'd be that quiet. Yeah. Like out of everything, imagine you're in the bathroom and you're just like wrecking hell. <laughs> like you're just like dumb and dumber. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it, it's a bad situation. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'd probably die. I don't think I could do it. Yeah, no, uh, I don't think I would. Days are like lucky if I'm super lucky. Yeah. So. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, my number ten movie, and I already know some people will be like, really, uh, Avatar two: The Way of the Water. That theater experience, I saw that movie seven or eight times in theaters. Fucking crazy to me. I love the Avatar world. I still haven't even finished it. Really? I love the Avatar world so much. And it's funny because when I first watched the first one as a kid, I didn't really get the hype at all. I I, I was like, this is cool, but I'm just, eh, it's whatever. And then, you know, as films start to come out, uh, I kind of during COVID, I kind of found a newfound love for the Avatar movies, and I think a big part of it was there was so much shit and junk coming out during COVID because mm-hmm. all it was is streaming films, and vice versa. After it, there was a lot of shit and junk coming out, and there were some gems. But as I watched it, I just like I need I need to detox. I need to go back to a world that just feels sensational. And I needed to transport because it was the COVID was a depressing time, you know? Yeah. And I watched Avatar and I was like, I don't know what was wrong with me the first time I watched this. I fucking love this movie. I love the world. Yes, it's cheesy sometimes. Yes, yes. It borrows from a lot of movies, but so do other movies. Movies borrow from each other all the time. Mm-hmm. So then the second one instantly became one of my most anticipated films. The trailer looks amazing. And then the, they did the re-release of Avatar 1 in theaters, and I saw that. And I took I went three times to that, and it was so cool to see it in IMAX, like, again. like, um, And it was just, it was an unbelievable experience. And I see two, and they did four press screenings for it. I went to the first one, and I said, I have to see it again. So I went the next night, and the next night, and the next night. I went four fucking times to this movie before it even came out. That's and then when crazy. it came out, I bought tickets. I had to see it. My mother-in-law is huge into Avatar, so we took her. 
I wanted to see her reaction. Mm -hmm. My sister, I wanted to see her re Like, I wanted to just keep seeing. And if I knew that you hadn't finished it, I probably would have taken you too. I'm Honestly, I, I just got busy though because it was fucking holiday season. But yeah. I love this movie so fucking much. And it doubles down and does everything better than the original. And the biggest thing that it did was it made me care about his fucking kids. I thought those kids were going to be annoying and I ended up loving them. Um, and I was going to say a spoiler, but I'll, I'll leave it at that because I don't want to spoil it for you. But there's a, That's thing, there's a thing that happens towards the back half, the last 30 minutes that had me crying. Like it got me so emotional into this family that I can't wait for the third one. And I will say my friend knows someone who's working on this franchise, like the visual effects kind of told us the concepts for three four and five that's crazy that they're making that many uh, james cameron come out sooner uh so three's next year two years after that four two years after that five which makes sense a lot of it just how long it takes to render the visual effects but i think it's cool i like that now they're consistently coming out because now they've caught up with the technology but uh three sounds cool Four sounds fucking incredible. And five, I don't know what the fuck they're going to do with five, but five sounds insane. Like the from like just a little glimpse, because that was the one that they weren't the furthest along with. All I know is that for the people who complain that they copy so many things, starting with three, it's taking away from that criticism. And that's one thing I really like about James Cameron is that when someone criticized something about the first one, he kind of fixed it in two. Vice versa, the things that people criticize in the second one, he's fixing in three. So it's like he's, it's, it feels like it's going to be one of those franchises that each one just gets better and better. And I think for a world like Avatar, like one and two are the high, like one is the highest grossing film of all time and two is the third highest grossing film of all time. That's amazing to me. It's an original IP and it just blew up like that, you know? That's mm -hmm. so fucking cool to me. So my number 10, Avatar 2. Go to your number nine video game. Okay. Number nine video game. This one's classic. The original Modern Warfare 2. This is also in my top 10, but not here. Oh, really? So I'm excited to talk about that. Uh, what? What? It, why is it your f uh, number nine? I think it was just like the introduction of Killstreaks. Yeah. The way how like they did their perks and everything. Uh, we talked about like our last podcast. If you guys all watched it about simplicity in video games yeah. and this was like the beginning of like that first complexity yeah of like adding more layers of but not too complex yet yeah not like now complex. we look back and that's simple that's simple stuff now mm -hmm. like oh only two attachments at most and you had to pick a perk to do that but now you could get like five and even in vanguard you could do 10 or whatever. yeah but yeah it's it's cool that like this game added those layers and the story was also just super amazing. Like it added a lot of like modern actual technology. Yeah. I mean, you take from the first modern warfare, which was great mm -hmm. and you just doubled down and made it better. Yeah. Like the heartbeat sensor, the yeah. what was model it? 1887, yeah. the Kimbo's man. <laughs> yeah. Fuck third person mode. Yeah. Which and was actually kind of fun. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Like I think the, the game itself, there was like so many different things, like the one man army noob tube stuff. Yeah. The it was, there was a lot of bullshit in that game. Yeah. But, but like, it was cool. Spec Ops. Was I think it cool was too. just like the fact that everything was broken in some way. The UMP was broken. The vector was broken. The noob tube was broken. Knifing was broken. And they don't fix it. They, they just didn't leave fix it. it. They just left it. They, they fixed the models because that was like. That actually almost like the the sniping basically with yeah, it. Yeah, you were sniping with it, which that's fine. I get it, but it was. I think that was like peak Call of Duty for me. I agree. I think I think they had a nice run. Modern Warfare One, World at War, Modern Warfare Two, Black Ops One. Yeah. Modern Warfare Three was fine. I'm not huge on that one, like some people are. And then Black Ops Two and then Black Ops Three, like that. That was the the perfect run, in my opinion. And then, I mean, they kind of just got into whatever they were doing. Black Ops yeah. 4 was fine, too, but no, nah, man, I agree. Uh, my number nine one is, um, and I go back and forth because I don't know which one I like more, but it's either God of War 2018 or God of War Ragnarok. 
Um, mm. I don't know which one though that I like more. I just love them both. Um, but it turned a character that I was always interested in and I'd always liked the God of War franchise, but I wasn't like, like, don't get me wrong. The boss battles are amazing. God of War three, like some of the peak boss battles ever in gaming history. But then they did something different. They dove into the character of who is Kratos. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that really like came to me in like such a different way that like I never thought I'd be so invested in a character that I just like to hack and slash the shit out of. And honestly, I think a lot of hack and slashers, it would be kind of cool to see this. I'd love to see a different kind of thing with Devil May Cry personally. Um, I think there's other Ninja Gaiden. I think the, these are characters that you can expand on. And I think God of War showcases that in an amazing way. Yeah. I think um, this like past like decade for like hack and slash games have changed up the dynamic so much from being like this really far away camera and then being sworn by like 30, 40 kind of trash tier mobs and then having like a big guy come in. Now it's like each it's like super personal. You're right over their shoulder. You're doing these crazy moves yourself. You feel more involved mm -hmm. and like the combat just feels more gritty. And well, and you say right over your shoulder and I love that because God of War is very, it's a one shot take the entire game. There's mm -hmm. no stops. I mean, I'm sure there's loading scenes somewhere in there, but yeah, they, it's just so perfected and I love it. Like my only grievance with Ragnarok is it feels a little rushed. But I still think it's perfect. Yeah. Like, and 2018, like Ragnarok, I 100%. I platinum the shit out of the fucking game. 2018, I never had the intrigue to go back and platinum. Um, so it's like, I don't know which one I like more. I just, I like them both. So yeah, that's my number nine. Your that's number nine good. movie? Number nine movie, I would have to go with, ooh, I have to go with Revenge of the Sith. That's a good one. So that's your favorite Star Wars movie then, right? Yeah, I think it was just because the when I was growing up, I think I had my dad take me to the Star Wars film. I'm not kidding you, like eight times. Revenge and, of the Sith. Yeah, Revenge of the Sith. I'm like, I would get home from school. I'll be like, Dad, I want to go see Revenge of the Sith. He'd be like, again. <laughs> <laughs> and he took you, though. Yeah, he took me. He always took me. And I think that was like the one movie that I always just remember watching with him a lot. Do you have like a favorite thing from it? Like a, like a favorite scene or I think moment? it was just like the the dramatics of it all was just like so much about like Anakin turning to the dark side and yeah. this big, like I, I remember just being little and just looking at like, Whoa, these are really big emotions happening on screen. And I'm like, I really dig this. And then it was also just like dark too, just seeing all the Jedi's getting killed. Does this movie still hold up to you today? I don't know if I would have watched it now and be like, okay, I could probably, I still yeah. love I I love Revenge of the Sith today. I loved it back in the day, um, but, but just the way how the clone troopers are slowly making that transition, even in their armor to that like stormtrooper look, you could tell that they're still looking like good guys, but they yeah. got that look on them that looks starting to turn to be evil. Um, I think Revenge of the Sith's even better when you watch Clone Wars now, mm -hmm. and there's so much dynamic between Anakin. Kenobi, Ahsoka, who's obviously not in the movies, but, and then the clones too. Like mm. you have this whole other added dynamic. Um, it's interesting. I don't have a single Star Wars movie in my top 10 movies of all time, but it's my favorite franchise of all time. And Revenge of the Sith, I think is my third or second favorite Star Wars movie of all time. So mm -hmm. it's a great pick, man. It's a yeah. great fucking pick. Uh, my number nine is Zodiac. Uh, this is about the Zodiac Killer. It's directed by David Fincher. It stars like uh, Mark Ruffalo, Jake Gyllenhaal, Robert Downey Jr. Have you seen this one? Zodiac? Zodiac. It's about the Zodiac Killer? Oh my goodness, yes. I remember this. So this movie, I have a, a very interesting like history with this film because I, I didn't see it when it first came out. I was too young. Um, but I'd always wanted to watch it. Mm -hmm. And I was... This is a really bad time when I was watching it, but I was being a babysitter for this six year old girl, probably. Oh, no. Um, and she took a nap and her naps were like always like two to three hours. So I was like, okay, I got to pick like a long movie. And so I picked the Zodiac and I was like terrified 
from this movie because it's it's a horror film at its yeah. heart. There's a scene where Jake Gyllenhaal's under the basement and you hear creaking above and you get goosebumps. I'm getting goosebumps in right now thinking about it. But I love Zodiac so much. I think it's David Fincher's best movie. For a while, this was not in my top 10. I think La La Land was my number nine. Um, mm-hmm. And it's like my number 11. And to, to be honest with you guys, tomorrow La La Land might move its way back into this fucking thing. But when I was making this top 10, my top three is usually always definitive. I've, I've never changed my top three in like a long time. But the rest of this list is always interchangeable. But mm-hmm. Zodiac, I've just, I rewatched it recently and it just fucking it smacks so hard so yeah that's that's a good pick i remember that yeah i remember watching that with my brother that's a good film it's a fucking creepy ass movie man yeah so it's great uh your number eight video game this is going to be crazy much more of a modern game i actually really love tarkov okay escape Escape from from tarkov Tarkov. okay Uh, despite all the crazy controversy like i'm not a fan of what happened with everything and just like the stuff i'm very passionate about this game because it's like the first game in a long time that made me really fall in love with like first person shooters again because like i felt like growing up and i mean just playing a lot of different games battlefield call of duty and all that right like you could go into a lobby and sweep a lobby and go 20 and 0 or whatever right and have that good game and makes you feel good but since i've been playing games forever right i was just looking for something new and when you get into like a raid of tarkov and even if something like not even crazy happened but when you find something that you need for like a quest or something to go your blood pressure just rises because you're like i have to get out and now it's no longer about fighting people it's about just surviving and just trying to make the best of your time and you can have like so like the highs are so high and the lows are so low. You could go in and have like a match last 40 minutes, be filled to the brim with everything and then get killed right at the extract. And you're just like the fuck you're, you're upset. You're mad. You're angry, but it's like, it's, it's a game that in a competitive scene or like in a PVP competitive scene that like that finally gets my blood going and it's, it's an amazing game. And I, just like the way yeah. the customization too. It's, it's all there. Yeah. It's yeah, all massive. Like, I, it's crazy. Cause like I was telling you the story about like my brother went to go buy a gun and he bought a bunch of like Magpul, which and is And you like were able brand. to make that same gun. I've made the same exact gun, his exact build in the game to like a one to one. And it's just the it's customization. Crazy. It's wild. Um, I don't have a PC. I've only played and watched Phil play it at his house. And it's cool. Uh, it's not my type of game. I fucking suck at it. The, mm-hmm. there, there's no defining that. I, I just I suck at it. I'm not yeah. good at it. But I'm more always intrigued to watch you play it. And I think it's very entertaining. Dude, to watch I you play clocked it. in maybe like 3,500 to 4,000 4, so hours. And I, I don't even think I'm even that good at the game. It's just, it's a great game. Yeah. Speaking about playing games for a long time, uh, this game probably has one of the most amount of times i've ever played it and my number eight is fallout three. Ooh, good choice I, do you have fallout on yours yes you, i have okay. fallout on my list okay cool uh my number eight like fallout three was just the first time i played it, i fucking hated it i hated this game i fucking despised it i got it for christmas and i was like what is this i play as a fucking baby because i was huge on oblivion so like i wanted the <laughs> next game and i was so fucking confused i just it wasn't Call of Duty. Like, it was so buggy and shitty to shoot. Like, it was just not fun. Yeah. So then I did not play the game. I just stopped playing. And I went back. I started watching people play it on YouTube. I'm like, oh, there's a lot of cool shit to this game. And I think it was like two months later I jumped back into it. Because I didn't want I didn't want to break my mom's heart. Like, hey, can you return this game? I don't, I don't want it. You know what I mean? It's yeah. a Christmas present. And I fucking fell in love with it and fallout 3 i don't think is the best well it's my personal favorite fallout game but i don't think it's the best made fallout game i don't think it's any of that there's is nostalgia to it but i play it at least once a year once a year i grind through it i play almost all the add-ons i do almost everything you can in that game and it just brings me back to like when i was like 10 12 years old playing this game for the first time destroying megaton 
blowing it up every time, being just an asshole in this fucking world. It's the only game. Anytime you have to make a choice, it's the only game I will pick the asshole path. Why? Because I don't give a fuck about anyone here. And I just love Fallout 3. For some reason, it's just always brought me in into such a way. I love the world, and I love this game so much. I have so many hours. So many hours. Fallout 3 and New Vegas are like definitely like my most played Fallout games. Yeah. I definitely have like a... I would have to say like a thousand hours at least in both. Yeah. So. I mean, I don't, I don't blame you. Um, yeah. your number eight, uh, movie number eight movie. I believe this. Oh, sorry. I keep on walking away. I think this one actually goes to Pulp Fiction. Nice. That's a great pick. I love Pulp Fiction. It's a great one. It's not a mine, but it sometimes is. Yeah. So what's the, what's the reason for it? <laughs> um, I think just like as a Tarantino film, I think it's just kind of like his, I, I wouldn't want to say like Magnum Opus because I think he makes good films all around, yeah. but uh, to me, it, to it's like his best film. Yeah. I just, I really like the whole um, dynamic with Travolta and yeah. like Samuel Jackson. There's a lot of crazy things that just happen in the movie. And when I went to go experience this movie for the first time, um, I went to Alamo Draft House. Oh, that's such a cool and thing. And they did this thing. It was a Pulp Fiction party. I went with Noah. And what they did is that, like, they had the, like, the food items that they mentioned, the milkshake, mm. the quarter So they just pounder. went all Pulp Fiction? Yeah. Were they people went dressed all, up? Yeah, people were dressed up. And then they even had people come up and do, like, the dance during the dance scene. Yeah. And they had, like, a competition and people voted on who That's did the best. That's such a cool and, way to experience it. And it was, like, a it was a really good thing. Like, the pens that they gave you to write down the order were the syringes. Um, they That's had, so cool. like, bottle cap things. Those, like, little things yeah. you pull and they go, Poof. you're allowed to like pull those off anytime they shot, which was super cool. So I think I really fell in love with this movie because of the whole like experience. Yeah. The experience. And it was just like, wow, this is a crazy film just from start to end. Yeah. It's like the, from the money from the gimp. Yeah. The gimp. <laughs> so the diner, the yeah. drug, the overdose, you're like, there's so many things happening in these guys' lives. And it somehow all connects perfectly. Yeah. It's just crazy. So I love I, it. That's probably my number eight for film. I, I would almost put Pulp Fiction in mine. Uh, I love that movie. It's funny. The first time I ever watched it, I watched it on TV. So it was all edited and cut up. And <laughs> There's a lot. So then I begged my mom to get me it for Christmas. And so then I rewatched it. And the whole GIMP thing was not on TV. That's so crazy. So my eye was like, what the fuck? Dude, I like kept looking at the door to make sure no one was going to walk in. Because mm -hmm. she knew I had seen it. But I don't think to her she was like thinking like, oh, it's all unedited and stuff like that. Yeah. Bro, that, that shit scarred me. But my number eight is uh, Spirited Away, uh, the anime movie. Oh. Th this was my first introduction. Well, not my technical first introduction. My first technical introduction was Toonami and Dragon Ball and stuff like this mm -hmm. um, from one of my friends from elementary school in first grade. But in terms of movies, I was blown away. Um, I remember I just turned on Cartoon Network one day and this movie was playing and I hadn't even seen the whole thing. I just seen like part of it. Watch out for that. Oh. No, 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 you're good. You're good. I just can hear it. Oh no. No, you're Sorry. good. You're good. Uh, and spirited away is a masterpiece. It's, it's, it's a, such a unique movie that takes you to such a fantastic world that I just can't believe was like even thought of. And it, really convinced me to like just jump into Miyazaki in every way like anytime he has a new movie come out I have to watch it Howl's Moving Castle Ponyo it, it doesn't matter and then same thing with Studio Ghibli which was like something special um I just have a lot of nostalgia for Spirited Away though and in terms of like what it does for like my love for anime and I have to include it so it's just again a That's childhood a memory have you seen that one no I have not oh it's really good um now what? Number seven for seven. games? Seven yep. for games. You start. Uh, I actually originally put Halo Reach on here, but then I thought about this game. I'm like, I already have a Halo game, so I'm going to change it. It's mm -hmm. Bioshock 2. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. I got to change my list. But keep, keep talking. Yeah. So Bioshock 2, I 
just like after the first one and like kind of like the mind fuck that they put you through with Andrew Ryan. Yeah. I was just completely sold on the idea of just becoming a big daddy. And I thought you were going to play as one in the first one. Yeah. I th- when I saw it. Yeah. I mean, you get to yeah be as one right in the first one. But it was so cool that like they fully leaned into that and they let you experience this world from such a different dynamic. And just like the fact that you can still go and like protect these little sisters and you see the big sister running around stalking you throughout the campaign. And depending on like how well you treat the little sisters, it's how like aggro yeah. she gets to you. And it's like, it's, it's just perfect. amazing. Yeah. yeah it's it, amazing. It, it, the whole Bioshock franchise is really cool. And two is very underrated. I, it's the one I've probably the least amount, but I've always had fond memories of it. Yeah. So I like that. That's a good pick, man. My number seven, Modern Warfare 2. We've already kind of talked about it, so I'll go mm-hmm. pretty quick. Uh, this game was just the quintessential. It's probably the game I've played the most in my entire life, besides Fallout. Mm-hmm. Um, that summer, when at the summer after it had come out, I put 20 days into that game. 20 fucking days. My, I've never, like, my parents have never said, like, you need to go outside, but this was the one time where they forced me and my friend to go outside and go do something. They're like, we'll pay you to do anything as long as it's not playing this fucking game. It was the only Call of Duty I hit max prestige on. I got every camo. I was so obsessed with this game. I was obsessed with it. My disc cracked because of how much I played it. I had to buy a new version of it. I fucking love Modern Warfare 2, and it was just, it's everything to me. I love this game. Mm -hmm. So, your number seven movie. Number seven movie. Ooh. This one would probably have to go to... Terminator 2. Good pick, man. Good pick. Uh, any memories or anything that kind of associates with this? The, the T1 million, I think that's what they named it, right? With T1, T, T800, T something. It's the, Are you talking about name? the metal one? Yeah. Robert the, Patrick. Yeah, Robert I'll Patrick. I'm talking. pretty sure it's called the T1 million. I think Arnold is like the T1000. Let me see. If my Terminator lore is correct. If I'm wrong, just bash me in the comments. Say I'm the worst person ever. T one thousand. Oh, the metal one is. Yeah, T one thousand. I'm the worst person ever. You're so. all good, but um, you're just a couple zeros over. <laughs> no, just like that whole scene of like him just phasing through objects, mm-hmm. and it's so awesome. Like, I, I have a bigger appreciation for it because when I I watched an interview recently back in the day of Robert Patrick and how he like went so far in like in his method acting that when he ran he purposely ran with such like mechanical efficiency to give that off canny feeling that he was never like breathing hard dude he's so terrifying and he went to the range and he practiced shooting so much without blinking right? without blinking and it's just like one of those things that like you could tell that like he really did an amazing job with that character and he felt menacing. Which is cool because I'm sure he had that, like, I have to be more menacing than Arnold was in the original. You know yeah. what I mean? And he full out went into it. Like, I love Terminator 2. It's amazing. It's a great pick. Uh, my number, se- I'm not going to give more thoughts because it's also on mine. Ooh, uh, okay. My number seven is Arrival. Arrival I saw with you. Oh, and I remember, I was just, I, I don't even remember how I convinced you to go with me. I was like, hey, I'm going to go see an alien movie, I think. Mm-hmm. And the reason I went and saw Arrival was because I loved the director, Denis Villeneuve. He had done Prisoners, Enemy, first day watch, anything this guy did. After I'd watched Arrival, he became my favorite filmmaker working today. Um, Martin Scorsese is still my favorite of all time. But Arrival, he just transitioned to that degree. And Arrival was a movie that, um, I don't want to give away the spoiler, the twist ending of it all, but it's a movie that when I watched it, I thought I was getting a cool alien movie, and then by the end, it fucking broke me. It broke me. I cried, and I remember after we left, I'm trying not to cry right now because that ending is so fucking powerful, but it's so, dude, I'm seriously fucking crying thinking about it right now. Dude, I can't even, that's crazy, is it? I can't even remember the ending. I, I don't just, want to spoil it for the yeah. audience, um, but it has to do with the kid oh. and what you find out about what the aliens are doing. Mm-hmm. And it, it just blows my mind what Denis Villeneuve was able to do here. Amy Adams was phenomenal in it. Um, I'll leave it at that, but I highly recommend you watch Arrival if you've never seen it. 
your number six video game. Number six. Let me see here. Do, 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 do. Oh, we just talked about it in our last podcast. Huh. Dead Rising. Okay. Good um, the first? Me, the second. Okay. Honestly. Yeah. Um, Dead Rising as a franchise is probably just like up there. But uh, Dead Rising 2, I think, is like the magnum opus. Mm-hmm. Um, I did like the one that they did. What is it? Uh, Case West? Case the, West. Uh, off the record. Off the record. Case West was the arcade version yeah, yeah, yeah. side story. Mm-hmm. Um, Dead Rising 2 just kind of holds a really special place because they just took the the quirkiness that Capcom is known for and they just dialed up to 11. And you, I remember when uh, the website or whatever came out called like Tape It or Die and you could submit ideas for like weapon combinations and the winner gets to have their weapon combo in the game. I remember I was like, what do I want? I remember you did this. Yeah. I'm like, I want a leaf blower and a dildo. Did they do it? It's actually an off the record. That's cool. I I don't know if mine specifically got picked. Yeah. I'm not going to. You'll never know. I'll never know. But I remember I'm like, I want to shoot just like torpedo dildos. And that it was so cool, especially in like off the record when they, actually had that in there i'm like wow i remember i said something about that but just like the whole weapon combinations and like the bosses were super the world was so vibrant Yeah, it was like it's las vegas dude and the cool thing about that game is the fact that even though you have to keep getting your daughter shot up with the the zombrex Mm -hmm. it never became a chore like and that was the one thing that put me off when i heard about it in the game but when you play it it's like oh this isn't a chore like Okay, it's like one of the things I have to go do. Yeah, and they made it so that way you could do whatever you kind of wanted to get it. Like, mm-hmm. you could get it through normal story means, or you could literally just farm cash and just buy it from the store, exactly. too. Exactly, so, so it was and really farming cool. cash wasn't bad either, no, so it was... that's a good one. My number six, Pokemon Silver. Uh, my favorite Pokemon game of all time, Lugia, is, besides Gengar, my favorite Pokemon, my favorite Legendary. Uh, I love the Pokemon 2000 movie back in the day, too. Uh, it was my first Pokemon game. It's the only game I've ever saved all these years for my Game Boy Color. Uh, I've gotten rid of every other game but that one. And I still have my save from when I was a kid. So mm. I just have massive nostalgia that the fact that I've never even played the remake that was on the DSC, the DS. I never played it because I just, and I, I heard that's the best version of it, but I just never wanted to touch it. So, yeah. uh, number six movie. Ooh. This one, it's going to go to um, Oppenheimer. Go. Oh, new one. I like yeah. it. Yeah. I definitely, um, just like that film and that experience in general was just like so cool. Like, yeah. obviously. We got to see it in IMAX too, right? Yeah. And then film. Yeah, in that the, was so cool. In the, what is it? 75 millimeter? 70, 70 mil, 75 millimeter IMAX. Yeah. Yeah. So it was just like, um, even though you know the history of like the atom bomb yeah. right, and everything like, you know, what's going to happen and like what it really all leads up to. But I think that was like the suspense of it all too. Yeah. And I, it was just a really cool just film of like this making of this destructible weapon and this massive game changer in world war two. Right. Mm-hmm. So it, it's definitely up there for me. I dig that. Uh, it's funny. My number six is Interstellar. So it's a Christopher Nolan movie. Oh. Um, it used to be Inception for a while. And then I still have never seen Inst- Interstellar in theaters. But I, I really hope I can make time to see it when it's in theaters this year, when it comes back. But it's a movie that blew my fucking mind. Uh, from the the logic, the space, McConaughey's performance, all the lore and theorizing. There's just something special about Interstellar that defines generations for what sci-fi filmmaking can do and uh people say christopher nolan can't make emotional stories and i always look at interstellar and say look at this what do you mean he cannot make an emotional story um so yeah interstellar is my favorite christopher nolan movie it's my number six and my favorite film one of my favorite films of all time phil your number five video game Number five video game. I have Silent Hill on here. Nice. Uh, more specifically, it was a tie between two and three, but I know more about three than I do two. Yeah. Um, I think the story of like Cheryl is just like super good. Um, just like this teenage girl just figuring out this whole new world and like this fe- this giant cult that is just following her and the whole twist that comes along about why is just amazing. Um I do think 
two has probably like a stronger like story elements of like connecting like oh the reason why the monsters are like this is because of james's this yeah. right but i think three just has that kind of horror feeling and it has that campiness that comes from like a teenager protagonist yeah. and it makes it still fun in this crazy horror roller coaster of a ride so and it's kind of fitting because a lot of what's super iconic about Silent Hill 3 is that amusement park yeah where it is about being fun and crazy but now it's all horror and freaked yeah. out and I just I really liked it um I dig it I dig yeah. it man uh my number five Kingdom Hearts 2 uh just first Kingdom Hearts game I ever played blew my mind you can mix final fantasy with uh disney which were like two of my favorite things when i was mm-hmm. younger so i was like cool it's the best of both worlds to me uh the organization 13 those guys with the black hoods like always like i was like this is these are the dopest fucking dudes ever uh mickey with the black hood even better so mm-hmm. i had to be my number five uh number five movie for you i would have to go with alien 2 good pick Game Mm. over, man. Game over. Game over. Yeah. It's just, I was recently watching it with my brother because we were doing all the alien movies Mm -hmm. before we uh, went to go see Romulus. Yeah. So it was just like the space Marines are just so cool. Yeah. The, like the actual colonial Marines. Mm -hmm. I said space Marines, colonial Marines. Um, It's so like, it's nostalgia to me, just like seeing like all these CRT monitors. It's supposed to be yeah. future, but the, the, all the tech is super dated and looking and um, just like the alien threat in themselves are also just super cool. It's just an awesome film. It's fun. I love it. I love it. Good pick. It's funny because you just said a James Cameron movie. I have another one and my number five Terminator Two. another James Cameron movie. Yes. Uh, which I love. I love James Cameron. I think he's a phenomenal filmmaker. I mean, Avatar, Terminator 2. But Terminator 2 is like something special to me. Uh, my dad and me, we used to watch the shit out of this all the time as a kid. Uh, I love the car chase or the truck chase with the, on the motorcycle. There's just so much badassness to this mm. movie that you've already mentioned a lot with the the T-1000 uh, that is just scary. And for some reason, I just love this movie more than the first. Number four video game, Phil. Resident Evil, and I'm going to have to go with the original Resident Evil 4. Okay. Um, I do like the way how like the remake plays, but the original Resident Evil 4 just kind of captured that like perfect balance between horror and action. Yeah. And just like the replayability on that was just like, so massive. I love that. Um, Leon as a character is just super cool is just seeing yeah. him being from a rookie cop to now this like secret agent kind of dude and it's saying awesome the president's see. daughter and you get these awesome set pieces with like salazar and um like the giant statue that is running at him and then the whole chase sequence with that the gladiator galadors and everything it's just the variety of monsters, the variety of like locations too, is just super cool and something that you never really saw. Yeah. Because during that time, it was a lot of like, ooh, zombies. Yeah. That's it. Now it's different. But now it's like, they're not zombies, they're infected. Yeah. I so. like it. Uh, my number four is Bioshock Infinite. Ooh, uh, that's a good choice. So I love the Bioshock franchise. I always go back and forth if I like one or three more. But there's something about Infinite, whether it's the add ons. The kind of add into more of the rapture stuff and then also just the ending of the infinite possibilities that always hit me in other ways. This is another one of those games that I will replay every year if possible. Yeah, the the twist at the end was just so crazy. It's so awesome. It's highly recommended for anyone who has never played it to play through those. Number four movie. Number four movie. I'm going to have to go with... Oh, man. Spider-Verse. Spider-Verse. Which one? Across or into the Across is the first one, isn't it? No, it's the second one. It's the second one. I think I have to go with the first. Okay. So you know what's interesting? My number four is the second one. So let's just talk about it. Spider Verse okay. just as a whole is amazing. Yeah. When we went and saw Into the Spider Verse for the first time, I almost said Into the Geek Verse. When I when we went and saw the first one, I remember we were like the only ones that went to that press screening. Mm-hmm. And I think we were blown away. I didn't yeah. think we we didn't know what we were watching. It was my favorite film of that year, and then Across the Spider Verse was my favorite film of that year too. Um, amazing, just yeah. purely. It's just like from the art direction alone is yeah. just crazy, right? If I like, saw this movie as a kid, 
not to spoil what my number one is, but if I would have seen Spider Verse as a kid, this would be my favorite film of all time. Yeah, like it's amazing. It, yeah, it, if I was a kid, I, it would definitely be my number one yeah. pick too. It's just, it's a great movie. It's got a great story. It's a lot of love about family, and it's just, I love it. Yep. So, hundred percent, man. Uh, number three favorite video game, Dead Space. Ooh, good first, second. Dead Space 2, I okay. think, plays Good overall. pick. Yeah. That's the best one. Yeah. I definitely think it's the better one. Just the whole universe itself, just from how they do the rigs, how yeah. the, the aesthetic is just amazing. It's, un, the it's unmatchable. Yeah. The necromorphs are just scary. I got so involved in this world, just like seeing how this Scientology cult is just so involved about yep bringing this bring entire this entirety thing. like alien race back to life and what it means it's almost um kind of like how like independence day is like yeah. this really unfathomable being that like really it's so like different right yep. that these people lose their minds from it yeah um there was a movie. Don't spoil too much about. No, there's yeah. there's a movie that it, like it's kind of crazy that I know it took inspiration from Event Horizons. I think it's called. Yeah. Uh, it just, I think those just go in hand in hand, and just that whole cosmic horror is amazing. So I li- I agree. Uh, cos- speaking of cosmic horror, uh, Gears of War I think has a little bit. It might not go to space, but the horror of these. I mean, you think they're aliens, but I mean, they're coming from fucking below. Yeah. And Gears of War 3 is the climax to an incredible trilogy. It kind of just hits everything. Um, and it's crazy because I think a lot of people go back and forth. Gears of War 2 is the best. Gears of War 3 is the best. But I think Gears of War 3 had the best weaponry. It was just, it might not have had the horror tone that the first two established, but it was just that badass chainsaw retro lancer, whatever mm. you want to have, the sawed off shotgun. And it was the emotional tie-up. Uh, the death of one of your squad mates still hits hard to today. I know. And I love I love this game. When they did that trailer for like Emergency Day. Uh, oh, so good. It, just like when people saw young Mark and Dom um, together, everyone's just cheering in that press room. Yeah. I'm like, that's crazy. That How, was a great trailer. All yeah. these kids who played it that should yeah. have been playing it are grown up and they're just like, Yes, yes, finally. So the first game I ever played on the 360 was Gears, like playing it at my cousin's house. So that was, it was sick. Mm-hmm. Um, number three movie. Deadpool and Wolverine. Good. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Just, Good pick. It just, the way how they kind of did the whole dynamic with Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds is just amazing. Yeah. Um, it, we finally got what we wanted and it felt like a good reset button to help set the MCU back yeah. on track and to like actually make MCU really good again. Yeah. And it's, I loved it just all from all the cameos and all like the throwbacks. It felt like definitely a, a love project and yeah. you could see that these people really they enjoyed cared. what they did. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, uh, I won't get super far. It's not in my top 10, but I love the the deepness of finding out what is your purpose in this world. And I yeah. think that's kind of what that that kind of showed. My number three is Raiders of the Lost Ark, Indiana Jones. It's the greatest adventure movie oh. ever made. I love Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, I think it like blows away any other Indiana Jones movie. Mm-hmm. And I think it just quantifiably like shows Indiana Jones is one of the best heroes ever in f- cinema. So I, I love this movie with all my heart. Your number two video game, man. Number two video game that goes to Metro 2033. Good pick. Um, I would probably have to go with Last Light. But okay. Just like that's the franchise as a whole, seeing RTM's story unfold and his journey from what seemed like this really young and naive kind of person to being like more grown. And then now he has a this person he loves, Anna, who and trying to figure out what really is going on in this surface level world and no longer becoming like living down in the tunnels, but like reaching out and yeah. standing out far. And it's a really cool story. Um, I think it's very heart- heartfelt. Yep, it's very I agree. deep. I agree. Uh, the world's grim. It's really easy to get connect your emotions to like that sad guitar yeah. and the acoustics that play this really grim losing hope, but it's still there kind of feeling. Yep. It's amazing. It's so. a great game. Uh, my number two, it's one of the few I'm going to cheat on uh, mass effect trilogy. 
the entire Mass Effect trilogy, specifically two and three, are amazing. It's okay. um, I love how it all just you know comes to life and how because mm-hmm. it's all one big game. Your choices yeah. in one, two, and three all lead up, uh, and I think it's one of the b- greatest gaming experiences I've ever felt in my entire life. I legitimately care about some of these characters. I think about their backstory. I think about, do I want Commander Shepard to fall in love with this one or this one or Mm -hmm. why? You know, there's so many intriguing things and then it's just action-packed. It's awesome. Like, just the political nature of it. There's just so much fascinating things to it that I love this game. Mm -hmm. Your number two? Number two movie that goes to Avengers Endgame. Great pick. Um, I've only, I'll tell you once, like, I've only seen him once because of just, like, the emotional effect. Um, Obviously, like... I we ended up watching that movie right as the time my dad passed yeah. away, and that was like whoa. So just like seeing that, what was like the magnum opus of like the MCU of what was what fifteen years, in ten the years making. up to that point, yeah, yeah, ten years in the making for that final scene and that. I was very worried for you when we were watching that movie. fighting. It, it was amazing. Like it sucked that I never got to see that film with my dad, but it was you like, watched it with him. He was yeah, there watching it, was, it with us. It was great to be in this and to like finally see that closure. Yep. I think it was a great closing film for me. I love it. The peak of MCU for me. I I mean, you're not wrong. Uh, My number two, Wolf of Wall Street, uh, the film that I have seen the most in my entire life. And it's three hours long and it never feels like three hours. I fucking love this movie. It's Leonardo DiCaprio's best performance. It's Martin Scorsese's best directed movie. It's Jonah Hill's best performance. It's a wild, corrupted, fucked up riot that is hilarious. And at the same time, just what the fuck happened here? And I love it. I love it so much. I I just, this was the movie that made me go, fuck, you can really make a fucking great film. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. Uh, Your number one video game of all time. Oh, number one video game. It is Fallout New Vegas. Great pick. I was waiting for one Fallout was coming. I was like, I'm assuming it's his number one. Yeah. It just, Fallout New Vegas was just amazing in itself. Um, The fact that like you're in, Nevada, you're in Good Springs, you're seeing Las Vegas, the perks, the story, the factions, the NCR, Caesar's Legion, it's just, it's all there. It's all there. Yeah. And honestly, like my, one of my favorite characters in gaming is in that game, Mm -hmm. Joshua Graham. Good pick. It's just an amazing character. It just, there's so much detail and your choices really do feel like they matter. The people that you're involved with, the politics are all there. It's just amazing. So that's my number one. Do you know what my number one is? What is it? Can you guess or no? Um, I'm going to have to guess. Oh, geez. It's not gears. Last of us. Yep. One and two. Uh, The best story ever told in, video games i would almost argue the best story ever told in any media i genuinely think this story it's i mean it's transitioned greatly the tv so far um i know people have their thoughts on two and i i still don't agree but i love two so much i love one so much this story that of just so many different things of love revenge horror uh, grief all mm-hmm. these things all paralleled into a story about a fungal disease that turns people into zombies baffles me. I'm not going to get emotional again like I did with Arrival, but I fucking mm-hmm. love The Last of Us, and it's one of my favorite things of all time. If I ever were to get a tattoo, Ellie's. I'd do Ellie's. Uh, from, oh, uh, the, the, the half sleeve that she yep. has? Yeah, that's cool. All right, your number one movie of all time. Iron Giant. Yes. I, I know we've talked about this before, but Iron Giant's amazing, man. Yeah. I, I love Iron Giant. It's the favorite, my like favorite coming of age yep. film with Hogar and yeah. just like, it's not only even a coming of age film for him because Iron Giant himself is meant to be this weapon, right? Yeah. But he's still like a child. And he's learning. And he's learning. And it's cool because this kid is who's still trying to figure out yep. the morality of yep. life and his own morals yep. that he's, that he's imposed from his mom yeah. that he's giving to this giant death robot. Yeah. And now he's like, Oh, you know, it's sad when things die. It's sad when it's, it's, it's a great movie for kids. Yeah. It's awesome. I absolutely love that movie. I love it. Well, my number one's also an animated movie. And it's toy story. Toy story. I think toy story is everything as well. 
uh, I don't know what it is, but Toy Story, every film in the franchise has always been a part of my life at like when I really needed it. The first one I watched constantly as a kid, but you know, Buzz and Woody, what happens when you bring someone in your life that's a little bit different? When my sister was born, that's a big dynamic change for me. Toy Story 2, you're kind of growing and going on to this new adventure and that was me starting school, starting mm-hmm. kindergarten and it's always stuck with me. Toy Story 3 came out a couple of years before I was about to graduate but it fucking hits. And then Toy Story 4 kind of shifts your parallel of what you think your point of life is. And in a way, I'm sappy as shit. And Woody acknowledges that, well, I've done everything for all these people. It's time for me to fall in love and do what I want to do now. Mm-hmm. And I fucking love that. Mm-hmm. So I fucking love it, man. That's our top 10 movies and TV or movies and video games. Fuck, I cried at Toy Story 2. Uh, those are our favorite top 10 <laughs> movies and video games of all time. Thank you guys so much for watching this. Make sure to like, subscribe, follow, all those different things. Yeah. My name is Phil. I'm Zach. Have a great rest of your day. Be great.